can have a profitable system. You can be a profitable trader and it can be your trading psychology that needs attention. Your system's not broken. You're not broken, but psychology is so important. I hope I can help you find your mojo again. Have it. You just have to find it, relocate it a bit. So let's take a look here. Obviously, we have a huge move down. We are inside a bullish zone and springing back from there. But let's see as far as the 2022 model goes, what we can find. Me, change came when I was so fed up with myself and I felt like I didn't know what else I could possibly do. And I said, I will give this psychology stuff a try and commit to that with the understanding that Yes, I could learn more, but I don't think that's the problem. You think of consistently profitable, profitable, you know how to do. Consistently is what I hear you saying is the challenge still, as it is for many, many people. One of the things that I've realized for myself is when I've started a new challenge or a new prop firm or a new account or whatever it is. When I start it, if I go really heavy and I get into drawdown, that's when I really struggle and it ends up taking me way longer to get out of it versus if I'm willing to take it really small, build up my confidence in my system and in myself. It seems like that would take longer, but in reality, it actually takes much less time. Because when I have a buffer in an account, I trade much better and much like mentally freer than when I'm in drawdown. I, I personally really struggle with drawdown. It just unnerves me a bit too much. My husband and I were talking about that today, how we just could not, and we're both competent people, we've done well in our careers, and we just are like, how can we not do what we mean to do? How can we not do what we intend to do? And, it, and that was the thing that was so frustrating is we, you know, I'm a psychologist and I still was like, how can I not figure this out? It's, you know, we're not, we don't have addiction problems. We don't have, you know, we're doing well in life. Why is it so hard? And in my opinion, it's just the complexity of trading is so huge. There's like the mental side, meaning the chart side, the technicals, the logic, that whole thing, thinking probabilistically. And then the emotions on top of that. And that mix is just such a big thing to tackle. It just it just takes a lot of psychological fortitude. I never like going back to sim either, but I see it as either going back to sim to get your behaviors right. So you're doing the things that you intend to do, and then you can graduate to trading prop or live or whatever it is. And also if you are trading live and suddenly you're losing confidence or you're making too many mistakes, then it's time to really size down. This whole thing is a progression and whatever it means for you to fall back, you might need to fall back from time to time. What helped me the most, the mindset warm up is something, it's all over my channel. I think it's the most important thing that I started with. So you also need to have probabilistic thinking, positive self-talk, talking out loud, all of these things. But for me, the thing that made the biggest difference was starting with the mindset warm-up. In particular, the most impactful first step was literally power pose. And it's a two-minute pose where you basically, you do box breathing, you stand in a position of power. And there's research that shows it chemically changes your brain, increasing testosterone, reducing cortisol. But coupling that with box breathing helped calm my body before I started trading. And then after I had that benefit, I was able to really, really, really benefit from visualization. That didn't happen immediately for me. It was the first step first. And then my body was like just physically and mentally in a different place. That sort of like helped me be more receptive to visualization which is what pro athletes you a trader is a lot like an athlete we do you know obviously we sit at a desk all day but as far as like operating under pressure setting goals dealing with failure dealing with upset these are all things that athletes deal with and traders need to deal with as well 
staying cool, calm, and collected under pressure, dealing with failure. You might go days where you only take losing trades. So how do you cope with that? How do you deal with that? 2022 mentorship will open up a whole new world for you. I agree. On YouTube, search Inner Circle Trader, and he has a playlist on the 2022 model. I agree that the 2022 model is a is a phenomenal place to to start. This is inside a bullish zone that is attractive to take along. However, this is a ton of momentum here. And we didn't actually like clear the lows or anything. If we cleared the lows and took out the liquidity down there, I would be more enticed. But it's just so much momentum to the downside. I'm more looking toward the short side, but I would need to get a pullback in order to go short. And I just think this is too much momentum to go long. Unless we go further down and then I might I might be more, more interested. All right, so what are we gonna get here? Are we gonna get any kind of opportunity or just you know, practice and patience today? I'm not sure. So we just had a market structure shift, interacted with this fair value gap, inverted it. This recent fair value gap is bearish, strong momentum to the downside, but we are inside this bullish zone. So in order to go short, I would need to see, I'd like to see it come up into this fair value gap. And I'm not sure that's going to happen in the next hour and 12 minutes. As far as a long opportunity goes, easier to frame a long trade at this point. But market structure shift here with a fair value gap. Market structure shift here with a fair value gap. And here, it's just the momentum is so strong. Someone was asking earlier about the 2022 model. So let me show you what I see as a 2022 model. So here we have a potential sweep. Price dropped way lower and then is coming up. Then when we switch to the one minute, we have market structure shift with fair value gap. Market structure shift with fair value gap here. Looking at the swing highs that were broken and a fair value gap was left. Market structure shift with fair value gap here. Also here. The only thing I don't like about this situation is that the momentum to the downside was so strong. There, the 50% retracement lines up with a fair value gap perfectly right now. So it's just that the momentum is so strong to the downside. That's the bit that I don't really prefer at the moment. But, you know, price came into this bullish zone, into the discount area. All right, give it, we'll give it a try. Like all or nothing gamble mentality. Oh, no, no, I don't do that. It's all in. No, 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 no. I never do that. I always trade based on a certain amount of risk. So it might be a slightly more, slightly less. On the 150K top step, I think you can do like, I don't even really know what the limit is, three something. I don't really know. I only ever trade based on a risk amount. So for example, if I'm trading 150K, I'll trade usually about a quarter percent at, uh, per trade, but I may size down in the beginning of a new challenge or if I'm ever feeling not particularly confident, maybe if I've lost a number of trades in a row or I've been making mistakes or something like that, then I'll size down. But no, I, I absolutely never would do an all or nothing. I have heard some traders talk about that that is kind of part of their strategy for challenges. But the way I see it, I don't think that's good this is my opinion. So you do whatever you want, but I I don't think that's practicing good behaviors for trading. I think it's okay to trade riskier, like more than a quarter percent. You don't have to not. And in fact, for me personally, if I'm working on a challenge, for example, I might be willing to start at like a quarter percent, advance to a half a percent as I progress higher in the account, and then maybe even go to like risking 1%, that would still be like way, way under 
next contract. Your best bet is to practice what you intend to do. So just like if you're a baseball player, when you go to practice, you practice what you intend to do in the game. And so for me, I'm practicing what I think are the right ways to trade. And so, yeah, max contract, no. <laughs> I decided to stop with a little red because that is my big problem. I don't accept losses. Well, you did today. That's awesome. Good for you. That's, I, I actually kind of love that you stopped before you got back to break even because I know that's harder to do, to, to take a small loss and leave it and to, to stop at break even. At least if you go to break even, you feel like, whew, you know, but that, but you, you also could go deeper red. And so what you're doing is actually psychologically harder. I take red days all the time. That's just part of it. I don't remember for sure where I, where I read this from. I think it was from Alexander Elder's Trading for a Living book, but I, I really can't remember for sure. Whoever it was said there's like big green days, right? So the days that you really, really win a ton. Then there's little green days where you just take home a little bit of money. And then there's um, little red days where you just lose a little bit of money. And then there's big red days where you lose a lot of money. As long as you can get rid of the big red days, you're good to go. So you can get rid of those big R's, you're good. That's trading. It's the big R's that get you in trouble. I'm a little bit torn with this one. This is a valid trade for me, but with that much momentum to the downside, do I really want to take that trade is the question. I'm gonna take the order off for right now and I will reevaluate. But I just wanna be able to think clearly about it without like pressure of it maybe getting hit. So I'll take it off for right now. I think that's actually pretty empowering. So, you know, it's it's fine to have a daily loss limit where you're locked out, but if you can be the one to lock yourself out, that sort of helps strengthen the discipline muscle and I think I think that's really I think that's good. With the Nasdaq, it's a little bit tricky today too because, you know, the move was definitely short and I think, you know, for those of you and for me included that were looking to short this earlier today, uh Giving yourself grace when you do things wrong is a good idea, but giving yourself grace when you don't exactly nail it either is also a good idea. So I tried shorting this market and the idea was right and the timing was off. And, you know, the reality is like you're not going to time it perfectly every time. So it makes sense to take two attempts sometimes. Just because that happened, I don't want to make a trade that doesn't make sense just because you know, it didn't work out this morning. So it could be telling to see what happens in the next nine minutes. If we create a fair value gap here, that could sort of strengthen a long idea. So now I would extend the Fibonacci here and it would look something like that. So if this fair value gap remains in the next eight minutes now, I would be potentially more interested in a long. I think the group needs to determine whether it is lacking technical edge or behavioral edge. Yeah, until you have put in like 30, 40 years or something like that in the market, there's probably always room that you could continue to grow technically. However, I, I also think that's like an area where traders get caught where I personally have gotten caught before thinking like, oh, if I learn more then I, you know, I won't lose as much or something like that. When the reality is it's not so much the technical that I needed, it was the other side of things, the behavioral, trying to figure out how to do the right things, the things that I intend to do, the things that I mean to do. You always have the opportunity to slow it down. It doesn't even have to be because you're struggling. You might just decide, you know, that's where I am right now. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's see what happens here. So the most recent fair value gap now is bullish. So I know this is bearish and I'd love to see price come up there. I think this is worth taking a long entry if it gets spilled. That does not mean it'll work out. 
but I think you can consider this a valid 2022 model at this point. The trick is like still keeping your psychology in check without changing anything really. It's kind of like what we talked about before, a batter who's a really good batter adjusting this their swing just because the competition is different, the weather is different, the umpire is different, the field conditions are different. If you have a good thing going, the key is to keep it consistent without changing anything. Okay, so I just got filled, so we'll see. Moment of truth. We'll see what happens here. Looks like, my goodness, might that might be the quickest loss ever if it This is not financial advice. As you can see, I don't control the market, so you should not go by what I say. But this is a valid entry, and that doesn't mean that it'll win. I could just as easily lose. The thing is, like, you just don't know. That, that kind of violent move, as terrifying as it can be, if you let it be that, you can't know and you can't decide in the moment. You just have to have a plan ahead of time. And... And then it just is what it's going to be. That was a mostly pretty ugly move. It's just way too early to tell right now, but came and like went, moved beyond the spare value gap. And that could be what ultimately sends it higher, but of course it could fail as well. It's a 2022 model entry long. Doesn't mean it'll work out, but it's also in a bullish zone. And also the most recent fair value gap was bullish. The reason I don't like the setup for a long is that there was a substantial move lower earlier today with momentum. We have this really large bearish fair value gap off of all time highs and additional momentum candles. Looks like it's really picking up volatility in the last hour. Give it some time to play out and see what happens. Can't be scared of violent trades. You should be scared if you don't have a stop loss. Sometimes they're violent and sometimes they're slow, sleepy, and you don't always get to decide. For me, that's the hardest part, like picking your poison or like I like the expression, pick your pony and ride. I don't ever want to commit to anything. I want to trade all the strategies and that's just not a very effective way to do it. I have found a lot of success with trading pullbacks and so I think if you can get comfortable with that, it is a really great way to go. It's just that you have to be okay with when the market is moving against you. That's when you're going to make your move. There's evidence that says about half the time I'm going to be right, half the time I'm going to be wrong. And I just need to keep showing up the same way as much as I can, the same way every single time, and then just see what happens. We practice what to do in those times. So that doesn't mean your tra trading is going to change. Your trading will stay the same, but you can practice how you personally are going to respond in those times. And you can gain so much mastery and so much control over yourself that it's not a big, it's not a big deal. Like you don't have to have your body having a reaction from it moving against you. Entire professional baseball teams, a lot of times they have their own psychologist that takes them through mindset stuff, visualization, and we do that same thing here. So I feel like if I can stay calm and stay centered and I'm not bothered by it, then it is viable. And if I'm like getting anxious, that's why for a long time here, I wasn't showing my stop and my big profit. I had been showing it and then I stopped. And the reason was simply, I just, it was just making me anxious and it doesn't make sense, but it just was. And so for that reason, I stopped, I stopped showing that. Okay. So this is a one to two. This is one of the times when I've talked about before, like I'm going to let it see if it, if we're going to get a little bit more of a move. And then I will ride up the stop because this thing is getting crazy. What the heck? It's 
So I will lock in 2R for sure. What in the world? So, you know, it might continue higher. This I'll just talk out loud what I'm thinking. It, it might continue higher, but it might also come back into this area. So I'm content if I get stopped out at 2R, then, you know, I made 2R. So that's great. But sometimes when you see a move like this, you can, you know, kind of push for a little bit more. So let's just see. It might come right back in on me and then I... I have two R locked in. So right now I'm in a win-win position. Either it will continue higher or it won't. And either way, this will be a good place to be. I don't need to have my cursor on there. So now, you know, even though this is a win, I'm feeling like it's a little bit stressful. So now I'm taking my hands off the cursor and I'm just working on relaxing my body, relax, you know, it's fine to have emotion, but turning it down, tuning it down, staying calm in my mind. And it's odd to have, I don't have a fear response necessarily, but I am feeling like elevated, like emotional response. And so I'm just focused on calming that down. So it helps me to talk out loud. I have nothing to worry about here. This is either a really good trade or a really, really excellent trade. So my job is simply just calm, relax, and just let the trade play out. I'm going to go ahead and just, this is a really aggressive stop. And if I get stopped out, you know, right at the bottom of this wick, I'm okay with that. That's locking in more than 2R and even 1R is great. So locking in more than 2R is just icing on the cake. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I like keep my hand on the mouse and that is kind of triggering for me. So letting go of that is like, literally letting go of it is is a really good idea for me. I think I'm going to get stopped out there and that'll be that'll be a good trade for the day. There we go. A little over it was 2.38 R. So 53 points. <laughs> 